So when we moved back to Michigan long time ago, we discovered something that we weren't quite expecting. We found out that the neighbors behind us had their own airplane. And they would just, they, they had this long runway where they could just take their plane out and just go do their, do their flying thing. All right, we weren't expecting that, especially the first time like this, this airplane came like taking or took off and went right over our, our house. And this isn't their uh, this isn't their airplane, but it looks a lot like that. What we're going to do with this today is we're going to talk a little bit more about how to do uh, kinematics equations, uh, specifically how to um, you or how to calculate velocity and displacement when we are experiencing constant acceleration. So uh, here's, here's the plan. We've got the big four kinematics equations. The ones that we are going to work on today are, are these ones, okay? So this one that involves displacement, okay? I should have a delta x there, all right? Displacement when we have initial velocity, time, and acceleration. And this one right here, this one right here is just, um, it's actually the average acceleration equation the idea that acceleration is equal to initial or final velocity minus initial velocity all divided by time. Well, it's the same equation. It's just solved for, for final velocity. These other two we're going to do in, um, in, in different videos. So let's go after this. Okay, so first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to use these two equations together. We're going we're gonna to try, try to multitask. So when we look at this, the first equation is this delta x or displacement. One of the ways that we can calculate for that is by taking the initial velocity of the object, multiplying by the, the time that it was accelerating, and then adding that to uh, 1 half times the acceleration times the time squared. Now one of the important things here is that we're only squaring time, okay? We're not squaring the, the whole thing, so just squaring time. And the other one that we're going to use in conjunction with this is this idea that the final velocity can be calculated by taking the initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time. And as always, you need to be able to do a little bit of uh, a little bit of algebra here, be able to solve for any of those variables. So so let's do this. Now, in another one of the videos that we did we were using this equation right here to calculate for, um, for displacement. And usually what happens when I teach this is I have some students that they look at this and they're like, well, hey, Mr. Spencer, which of these, uh, which of these equations do I use since they both solve for, uh, for displacement? Well, this is where you have to do some problem solving and you have to think a little bit about your situation and figure out, okay, which variables do I have? And after I know which variables I have, which ones am I gonna use? So if we look at this one, at this, this first one, okay, this involves initial velocity, final velocity and and time. If I look at this second one, okay, it involves initial velocity, it involves time, and it involves acceleration. So hopefully you can see that even though these both solve for displacement, this one is using different variables than this one. So you're going to have to figure out which ones you're or which one you're going to use depending on the the variables. All right. So let's let's take a look at this. So let's say we were to go over to my neighbor's house and you've got this long grass runway. Okay? So here's here's our long grass runway. So it, this is there we go. Green and then we've got our our airplane. And you guys know that it's really hard to be as good of a of a, a artist as I am. Okay, so this is this is the the, the crouches. Okay, um, and and they are taking off along this, and hopefully they're going fast enough uh, by the end to figure out or to to be able to take off. Otherwise, they're going to run into uh, somebody else's house. But all right, so let's let's write what we've got here. So first of all, we know that it's accelerating. 
it's accelerating at 4.8 meters per second every second. So every second that it's traveling down this runway, it's getting 4.8 seconds or meters per second faster. Um, we know that at the very beginning, so our initial velocity is zero meters per second because it's at rest. Um, we know that the time it takes to figure or to, to travel down this is is 15 seconds. Okay, so the, the things that we're trying to figure out at the end is what's our final velocity? And also what is our displacement? How far did it go? How long is that is that runway? So let's go through these and, and figure them out. So the, the first one, same thing as before, let's just focus on what's its, its speed at takeoff. So that's at the end, so we're gonna call that our, our final velocity. So that's our, our unknown. But the things that we know is it's, it's starting from rest, so our initial velocity is gonna be zero meters per second. We know that acceleration is 4.8 meters per second every second. And we know that our time is equal to 15 seconds. So what we need to do is take a look at our at our equations, okay? Which one of these has, um, uh, which one of these has initial, oh, let's go back to this, okay? Which one of these has our final velocity, initial velocity, acceleration, and time? Well, that's gonna be this one right, right here. So let's go here and we're gonna use, so we know that our equation is final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time. So let's go here and put stuff in here. So my final velocity, that's what I'm trying to find. My initial velocity is zero meters per second plus our acceleration, which is 4.8 meters per second every second. And then our time is 15, that's supposed to be a 15 seconds. Okay, so zero, that's easy. So 4.8 times 15, uh, that's gonna be somewhere around 75-ish. And sure enough, when I put that in my, um, in my calculator, I get a final velocity of 72 meters per second. Boom. All right, so let's do the next one. Okay, let me do a better job this time of, of color coding things. Okay, so the first thing we know, but this time we're trying to figure out how long is the runway. So that's our unknown. No, it's not velocity. It's our delta x. Okay, so that's what we're trying to figure out. We know that it starts from rest. So that means our, our initial velocity is, is zero meters per second. Um, it accelerates at 4.8 meters per second every second. So our acceleration is 4.8 meters per second every second and that our time is 15 seconds. Okay, so let's go and we know by looking at these other things that the equation that we're gonna use that when we're trying to solve for uh, d displacement and when we have um, initial velocity, time, and acceleration is going to be, whoops, let's get rid of that. Delta X is equal to our initial velocity times the time plus one half times our acceleration. And then we have time again times time squared. Okay. So let's go ahead and start putting this stuff in. So our delta x is going to be equal to our initial velocity, which is zero meters per second, 
multiplied by the time, which is 15 seconds. Okay, so I'm gonna have to, let's see, one half our acceleration, which is 4.8 meters per second per second times our time squared, 15 seconds squared. So once again, we want to make sure that when we square this, when we square this, we're only squaring the time. We're not squaring everything else. So when I plug this into my calculator, I get a delta x or a displacement of 540 meters, which would make sense for what we're trying to do with an airplane. Okay. All right. So I hope that that this makes sense. Remember, we're going over the kinematics equations for that, that deal with acceleration. These particular ones are the velocity or involve velocity and displacement when we have constant acceleration. So hopefully that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions.